Welcome to Continuum Mechanics. I think all of you probably have heard either good or bad things about the class, but it's an easy class. Okay? Whatever you have heard <laughs> is not necessarily true. It's an easy class, so you should not have any difficulty. The first thing we need to resolve is the grading policy, because last week I was not here, so we So I guess you can see probably the Yeah, zoom wide, yes. Press wide. And it will pick up speed. I'll just be careful. Oh, okay. Good. Thanks. So, can, I, can you see this like homework 25%, two class tests 45%, and final exam 30%? It said the policy will be voted on during the first class period. So, today is not technically the first class period, but let's think it is the first class period. So are you happy with that? Or if you are not happy, we can change that. And today is the time, this is the time to change it. So how many of you are, how many of you feel that we should change the weights for the homework and the two class tests and the final exam? Remember the final exam and the class tests are closed book, no notes. Okay. So it's basically your brain your hands and a piece of paper. And of course, yeah, you can talk to your neighbor, yes. <laughs> yes. Do you think, uh, or at least I think the homework should have more weight? Okay. Oh, one thing more I should clarify. The homework, even though it said only one problem, one randomly selected problem will be graded, fortunately the department assigned a GTA to the class. <laughs> So more than one problem will be graded. So I repeat, more than one problem will be graded. So I do not know how long it will take the grader to, because he has been assigned 10 hours a week. So whether he can grade two problems or three, I do not know. So we will find out as we go along. So that policy of one problem is gone. So that's why I asked you to write your names on all the sheets. So it's not, so we will see how many problems can be graded. Okay. But you should do all of them. Previously, I used to grade myself, and that's why it was only one problem. It's not that my time is any more valuable than his time, but uh, the university expects me to do a lot more things than they expect him to do. Um, okay, well. So, I think you made a suggestion. So, what is your suggestion? How much should we change it to? Like, homework should be what? Instead of accept anything cannot be zero. I have a veto power. <laughs> it's not quite democratic because if you say, like, final example count zero, then of course I will veto it. So, anything has to be, re something has to be reasonable. Speak up, I think. Uh, pardon? Yes? It'd be nice if homework was more. Well, you give me some numbers, you know. Just saying more it doesn't help, right? Because 20, if I say 26, that's more than 25. I'd say we make homework 30 and Any other suggestion? Yes? Possibly uh, do. 30, 40, 30. So I have the homework be 30% still, but the test 40 and the final exam still. Any other suggestion? He has experience. He took a class from the last year. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. any, any other suggestion? Just keep making homework higher and higher. <laughs> Higher is, the highest is 100, so that's, 
That's we told. Ninety-eight one one. Sorry. What's the rationale behind it? Well, I mean, if you have 30% of your grade at the end of the semester, and if you have a bad final exam schedule, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, okay, the counter argument could be, I'm not saying is, okay. could be that if you have been studying all along, which I hope you have been, then it should not matter much. But Anything can happen, you know. It's all of us are human beings. We we react differently to different circumstances. So there is whatever applies to me may not apply to you, and vice versa. So I, I really can't say anything. Do that. You want to do 40, 40, 20 then? Send the test in the final or equal? What 40, 20, 20? 40, 40, 20. Yeah. That's nice. Is it going to be right before the final, or is it going to be like two-thirds of the way through the class? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Probably two-thirds of the way through the class. Well, then it seems fair that the test and the final exam should be equal, since they're all cumulative, and they're placed at approximately third, two-thirds. So yeah, the, the tests are cumulative. Like, whatever is covered in the first test will be covered in the second test. And the material for the first test and the second test, of course, will be covered for the final exam. I think the Wake Forest people and the uh, Oak Ridge people are quiet. I, oh, but they cannot talk back, I guess. That's the, the, we have an audio problem. OK, so any, now we have what? So let's say this is gone, because you don't, you don't like this. So we have four possibilities. So should we take a vote? OK, so how many of you vote for option one? You have to raise your hand so I can see it. Anyway. Zero. <laughs> how many of you vote for option two? One, two. With two words, you can't win, right? Option three. One, two, three. Hey, you don't want. Four, five, six. So there are six words here. Option four. Oh, okay. okay. I got it. Okay, so this is it. So don't blame me afterwards. Okay? So. I repeat, the uh, more than one problem from each homework may be graded. So it depends upon how large, like how big the problem is, and how much time the grade takes. Grade. Any other question you want to ask before we start? I think all of you got that sheet, so you have gone over it. And you should have gotten the second homework today. And the people in Wake Forest, I already emailed to them. And for the Oak Ridge, I will email when I go back to my office. OK, so if you don't have any questions, so let's start. So the first thing we are going to do is learn a common language so that we can communicate with each other without any confusion. And that language is mathematics. In English, we can still fudge around like politicians do. They say one thing and mean the other most of the time or much of the time. But here, we cannot say that. We have to say what we mean, period. It should not have two meanings. It should have only one meaning, period. Otherwise, we will not be communicating with each other. And that language, one of those languages is mathematics. So this course is more or, like, more or less mathematics. Before we start, we are going to assume that the problems we are studying can be regarded as a continuum, which means you don't look at the atoms, you don't look at the molecules, you basically look at things globally. Okay? 
So if you want to study atoms, the motion of atoms, then you should take quantum mechanics. But you will not be able to design an airplane or a bridge or a car or study the properties of, say, my skin because there are so many cells in it. So it's really not easy to study things starting from the at atomic level. However, we cannot study all the problems. You know, we, whatever we will study, we I will not be able to study this problem with the material we will cover. If the book is closed, you will not be able to open it. <coughs> or if the book is open, you will not be able to shut it. We will not cover this. If you take a sheet of paper, we will not be able to study this problem. If there is a crack, it will remain there forever. You cannot close a crack, you will not be able to open a crack. Okay? I'm sorry? We study crack propagation, but we fudge. We cannot use exact mathematics to study a crack propagation problem. You will see why. Because the basic assumption we are going to make is that two different particles always occupy two different places. So you cannot study simple problems like colliding because then two particles go into one place. So if you, if you want to study crack propagation, then one particle goes to two different places. Okay, so you will not be able to study that. And same thing, you cannot close a crack. Okay. So having said that, having given you the limitations of what we are going to study, now let us start the language. So first, this week and possibly part of next week is going to be learning the common language. And then we will start the mechanics part. So there is really no mechanics per se in this week. And that's, there is probably no mechanics in the homework problem I gave you today. So the first thing is, supposing I want to write something like this say A1, X1, plus A2, X2, plus A N, X N. Okay. Now, if you notice it, there are three dots here. And that corresponds to missing N minus three terms. We put three dots, no more and no less. You cannot put two dots and say this is this is the this denotes the missing term, and you cannot put four dots or five dots. It's only three. I cannot answer why it's only three. That's the way mathematicians adopted it. Okay, so it's only three dots, no more and no less. So we can write this thing as, this is the sum of n terms, right? a1, x1, a2, x2, a3, x3. If I use the summation symbol, which I think those of you who belong to Greek fraternity know this is sigma. So it's a summation symbol. So i goes from 1 to n. So that's the same thing as writing the first line. But I saved a little bit of ink. See, here I had to write the n terms, even though I skipped some, most of them. In the next line, I'm writing only a i x i, and i goes from 1 to n. If you don't like i, I you could say this is, you could say j. <coughs> or if you don't like j, you could say k. This one you have learned before. But what we are going to do now is we are going to adopt the convention that if an index is repeated, 
by that i mean if an index appears twice in the same term twice no more than twice then we will we will assume that it is sum so instead of writing this sigma as a summation symbol we will get rid of it and we will say this is just like a i x i r a j x j r a k x k okay so the the index i r the index j r the index k is dummy it does not play any role it does not have any significance except that it implies the summation of n terms now if you here we have assumed that i and j and k they go from 1 to n but n can be anything like n can be 3 n can be 5 n can be 100 so it depends upon the problem you are studying now for most problems we will study n will be 3 because we are in a three dimensional space but if you want to study problem for a bar say a string then n is 1 for a membrane or a plate or this sheet of paper n can be 2 but if i want to study how my book is deforming then n is 3 so for most cases n will be 3 but is arbitrary in other this notation does not require that n be 3 so i repeat if an index appears twice in the same term it implies summation over the range of the index the range of the index will be pre specified it will be given to you beforehand okay. like if you like something like this one now supposing i say a j b j c j what does this mean a j b j c j does it mean a1 b1 c1 plus a2 b2 c2 plus a3 b3 c3 or not no how many times the index j appears 3 3 what did we say what was the rule twice so 3 is not equal to 2 so it has no meaning okay so this is garbage okay so this is garbage it has no meaning in our language it has to appear only twice what about something like this how many times does i appear twice twice how many times does j appear twice twice so this is the sum of so we have to sum over i and we have to sum over j so let's assume that i and j go over 1 2 and 3 so the range of the index is a 3 okay so then this thing is equal to bi j bi1 C i C one plus B i two C i C two plus B i three C i C three. Does it make sense? So we have summed over J now because J is repeated. now j does not appear anymore in this line but the index i appears twice in each term whenever you see a plus sign or a minus sign now this this term is different from the next one so you cannot say i appears like six times i appears twice in each term so what is this term what is this equal to now
how many terms are included in this the one i put in the in the box 3 okay so we have 3 here three terms here and three terms here so we really have nine terms even though i put here ci cj i could have said a i k x i y k so how many terms do i have in this one right somebody please uh, raise your hand and then speak so i know who's who said what how many how many years oh so oh yeah 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 it's not because yes thank you yes you are right. so how many terms are in this one yes nine nine this is same thing as before the, this term this is the same as that one uh, all we did is change b to a and c to x and another c to y but what is important is that i is repeated it appears twice and k is repeated so this thing is basically similar to what we had before okay dr batra yes um we can't hear the virginia tech students when they speak at wake forest oh okay can you I, hear me now yes <laughs> okay yeah, think, okay thank you they will press the microphone button before they talk thank you thank you okay so so with this is sum up how many terms nine no let's try this one so let's see how many of you are away so we are how many terms are written when i write this in, in the long hand form how many terms will we get how much 27 27 good so this if first someone k so you will get 3 then you someone j so you will get 3 times 3 is 9 and then you someone i so you will get 27 okay so this is a neat way of writing like 27 terms because if, if i had to write 27 terms it will take me the whole sheet of paper and now i have basically in in less than a line okay so now let's go to the next one so this is a i want to write 1 or 0 so we define Okay, so we we introduce the symbol delta. We will see a lot of Greek symbols. So we we'll, that's because there were a lot of Greek mathematicians. Okay, so we are following that. So we introduce a symbol delta. So delta i j equals one if i equal to j, and is zero if i is not equal to j. and again i and j go from 1 to 3 so how many quantities have we written like i goes from 1 to 3 j goes from 1 to 3 so how many equations or quantities we have written here yes there are like nine terms there are nine terms very good okay yeah. so if you want to write this in a matrix form is something like this 100010001 and this thing has a name okay yeah. so this 
this thing is called chronicle delta and we will need it many times so this is basically an identity matrix not this it is identity matrix right or unit matrix and again there is really no choice except for us to learn this at the end of this semester you will have an assignment that will require you to go to the library and dig up a paper and read that paper underline every term in that paper that you have studied in the class except english like a b c no <laughs> and every mechanics term or some symbols like this we have learned in the class okay so you will see how often this material is used in the literature is not necessarily in mechanics even if you are studying civil heat transfer physics you will come across the material you will learn in this class okay now let's go to another uh, notation supposing i have these three equations y1 is equal to a11 x1 plus a12 x2 plus a13 x3 y2 equal to a21 x1 plus a22 x2 plus a23 x3 and y3 equal to a31 x1 plus a32 x2 we have come across this kind of equation before right these are linear equations in x and y a's are constants and as you can see to write these three equations i had to write three terms on the left side and several terms on the right side so first how can i how can we write them in in the short hand notation we just learned if you notice 1 1 2 2 3 3 3 they are repeated right and they like 1 1 2 2 3 3 3 so i could use the summation convention like i could use the the fact that f in index is repeated it is sum so the first equation we could write as y1 equal to a1 i or a1 j x j So the first equation we could write y1 equal to a1j xj. Does it make sense? So it's like a11x1 plus a12x2 plus a13x3. What about the second equation? So that's a2j xj. Right? And similarly. we could write the third one we still have to write no three lines right is better than the better than before but i'm still wasting lot of ink and of course paper and our time so let's let me write this one and then we will see what we can do so we are going to take these three and write them as y i equal to a i j x j where no i the index i appears only once j is sum j appears twice on the in the term on the right hand side so that means a i 1 x 1 plus a i 2 x 2 plus a i 3 x 3 so j is a repeated index i is a free index so we have repeated indices and free indices by repeated we mean appearing twice in the same term 
and no more than twice. A free index must appear in every term. Otherwise, it is meaningless. A free index must appear in every term. Like we have yi equal to ai jxj. Now, supposing if I write something like this, yi equal to a i k x k plus b j l say c l. Thanks. So, does it make sense? See, in this case, k is summed. That's okay. It's a dummy index. L is summed. It's a dummy index. But we have i free. Like it is not summed. And we have j. The rule is a free index must appear in every term. Every term. But here i does not appear in every term. And j does not appear in every term. So this is again garbage. It has no meaning. For it to have a meaning, we must have something like yi equal to a i k x k plus b i l c i. Now i appears in every term. And this is three equations now. So the, the understanding is that a free index can take values 1, 2, and 3, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to n, depending upon the problem you are studying. So if we restrict ourselves to 3, then I get takes values 1, 2, and 3. So, so these are you know, three equations. So now we have learned how to write three equations as basically in one line. And that saves time. Yeah. Of course, yes. Uh, do you, uh, oh, Ellen, will you please press that? Oh yeah, sorry. Do uh, L and K have to have the same uh, length for that uh, you know, addition to take place reasonably? You know, matrix addition. They don't have to, but usually they do. Yes. The we don't change the range of the index in the same term okay. or in the same paper. If you are writing a paper or a report, you generally do not change the range of the index in the same paper. So if you say in the beginning that you are assuming the index will range from 1 to 3, then later on you should not assume that the reader knows the index is now 1 and 2. So if you want to change the range of the index, you have to very specifically say it. Generally what we do is like the question he raised is a good one. What if L goes from 1 to 5 and K goes from 1 to 3? Then instead of using L here, I will use the alpha. And say my Greek indices go from 1 to 5 and Latin indices go from 1 to 3. Okay, so that there is no miscommunication. The whole idea is to avoid miscommunication. Okay, so... If now I want to write this in the matrix form, which you have already learned, I believe, right? So you write like y1, y2, y3 as a column matrix. So I will write this as a column matrix. What about aik? It has two indices, so it's a square matrix. And usually you indicate square matrix by uh, including something like in brackets. So what, so we can write this as in the matrix form. Okay, so now I realize it will take some time for you to get used to all this stuff. So please practice at home. 
you don't have to have you should have a book a book i did not say the book a book on continuum mechanics and most books will have the index notation as the first chapter not every book but most books will have that. so so practice it you have the homework that also requires you to to practice it yeah. now let's try to learn vector algebra see what happens you have all of us when we started we used coordinate system as x y z so these are like little x little y and little z and now i want to write a vector in this coordinate system so what we do is we take unit vectors i j and k and we say any vector u you might have used a superimposed like well, you might have used something like this to indicate a vector so both are equally good or equally bad the reason i am going to write tilde underneath is when we did not have microsoft word this was an indication to the printer that this is a bold face letter this was a, this is how we communicated with the printer type setter that if you put an underneath tilde that means the type setter will print, will set it as a bold face letter which means a vector the type setter it has hard time setting the arrow on the top okay, that takes extra ink but this one is a little easier so that's what that's why i'm putting this no that's not why but i'm used to it so we write it as uxi plus uyj plus uzk and that's how we write a vector now right but this is no this is not making use of what we just learned like 10 minutes ago now we want to use that we want to use the index notation we want to write this in a in a condensed condensed form okay so so instead of writing x y and z as the coordinate axes we are going to change those to x1 x2 and x3 okay. instead of saying this is x we are going to say this is x1 instead of saying this y we are going to say it is x2 and x3 instead of saying x y z we are going to say x1 x2 x3 the whole idea is that y is different from x and z is different from y so in our case now x2 is different from x1 and x3 is different from x1 and x2 okay so we want three something three different symbols or letters so we chose three different ones but that doesn't do me much good unless i change i j k also to something else now so instead of saying my unit vectors are i j and k i am going to say my unit vectors are e1 e2 and e3 unit means their length is 1 okay so instead of saying my unit vectors are i j and k i am going to say they are e1 e2 and e3 all you want is link all you want is different symbols so when there is no god given rule that i have to say i j and k that's the way we learned it we have been using it so they seem very familiar to us but e1 e2 e3 z1 z2 z3 h1 h2 h3 all of these are good choices again when I mean, there is no reason to use e but i just chose e i could have used an f 
I could have used that. All we want is three different, so we chose E1, E2, E3. So this I now becomes E1, J becomes E2, K becomes E3, No, ux, ui, uz, no, because ux is a component along x-axis, um, no, but instead of x, I'm going to use x1, so I'm going to say u1 is a component along x1 axis. u1 is a component of u along x1 axis. We still have four minutes, so some of you are looking at the watch, but no, we are supposed to go up to 12.05. Okay, so we have nine minutes. Plus u. Oh, no, no until now. No till done. These components are not denoted by bold face letters. Only the vector is denoted by bold. If you look at, in your statics books, they write vector as a thick A or like in bold face. So this underneath tilde means it is bold face. Okay, so now, so what we have done is u equal to u1, e1 plus u2, e2 plus u3, e3. Have we accomplished the mission? No? Oh, come on. We see I1, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. Right? So we can use the summation convention now. So what it really means is I could write this as ui, ei. See how much ink we saved? Instead of writing u equal to uxi plus uyj plus uzk, okay. Now, those of you who are who, who are a little bit familiar, if you open Love's book on linear elasticity, A.E. Love books on elasticity, it's a classic book. The author, everything is correct. The author uses uxi plus uyj plus uzk. Equations are half page long. Okay. In this notation, those half page long equations become one line. So that book, which is like 500 pages, can be condensed to something like 200 pages without losing anything. It's nothing wrong with that book. Okay? The book is classic. It's, the, it's kind of Bible in, in elasticity. So it's everything in that book is correct. It just takes too long to write and therefore a little bit long time to read it. Okay. So this then vector u can be written like that. Similarly, if I take vector v, that I can write as vj, ej. R, V, K, E, K, whatever you like. Okay, now let's see how many of you will tell me what is U dot V. And remember, if you answer, you should press the uh, speaker button on your microphone. So, what is U dot V equal to? U, I, V, I. You know what, what I mean by the dot symbol, right? It's the inner product or the scalar product between two vectors. Ui, Vi? Yes. Yes, Ui, Vi. Good. So U dot V in simple, like it would have been Ux, Vx plus Ui, Vy plus Uz, Vz. So this would have been Ux, Vx plus Ui, Vy plus Uz, Vz. But remember, no, we are not using x, y, z. We are using 1, 2, 3. So this would be really u1, v1, u2, v2, u3, v3. And then if you use the index notation, this thing is equal to u, i, v, i.
Okay. Now, let's stick with this uh, our graphic sketch again of the, our coordinates, coordinate axes. So we have now x1, x2, x3, unit vectors e1, e2, e3. So what is E1 dotted with E2. So please raise your hand and then you will need to press the button. So what is what is E1 dot E2? I think you are yeah you please yes. E3. Three? No. Is it already? You already answered, so you know. Third? Zero. Yeah, it's zero. E1 and E2 are mutually perpendicular, so their inner product is zero. What about E1 dotted with E1? But you need to press that button. So you, otherwise, people and the in Wake Forest and uh, Tennessee cannot hear us or hear you. Yes, I think you have a uh, speak up. You have a question. You are going to ask him. I am paid to answer your question, okay? Please remember, no question is stupid, no question is dumb. You have paid my sal part of my salary and in return, I'm supposed to answer your questions. Okay. So it's a prepaid card. You don't get any refund back. It's true. It's, so you can't use me to go to Kroger and buy groceries. <laughs> so you have already paid my salary, a part of my salary. Whether you take benefit of it is up to you. Okay. And in return for paying your tuition, which your project paid or your advisor's project paid, <laughs> But uh, the benefit you get is I'm supposed to answer your questions. If I don't know it, I will try to find an answer. And I don't claim to know answers to all of your questions. OK, so this, I think some of you, actually one of you said this is one. What about then E1 dotted with E3? Yes? Oh, you need to press that button. Zero. Zero. Okay. So, what about this one now? I think green is not good. Next time I won't bring a green pen. It's probably not very busy, not easily visible. Can you see that? So, what is E I dot E J? No. Is that the identity matrix? Very good. Who said that? It's good. It's, it's correct. It's really, no, it's correct. Okay? So this is delta IJ. Because if I equal to J is 1, and if I is not equal to J, it is 0. So E I dot E J is delta I J. We're about to lose you down here. Yeah, I know. I'm going to quit.